But I don't think there's really been an album that hasn't owed an awful lot to uh, rhythm and blues music. Uh, everything that I've done has had that as a basis. So just run the track, John, oh, yeah, and the song. get the sound as you go. <laughs> The first artist I really sort of uh, dug was uh, Little Richard when I was about eight years old. I found it very exciting. And, and it made me sort of really get interested in um, black music, American black music. And for a number of years I worked with rhythm and blues band. So for me, I think, you know, one of the foundations of my interest and in, in also my participation in music has been my own black ties. Black Tie, White Noise is the title of David Bowie's first solo album in six years. The soul and spirit of rhythm and blues is the foundation for Bowie's latest musical adventure, exploring challenging themes and ideas with style and substance. What do you reckon, now? One pass in the section, then two full passes? Yeah. yeah, and I think that no matter what, Lester, like he says, he likes to play yeah. free. It's a project he's handled with care, along with Niall Rogers, who, with Bowie, produced the successful album, Let's Dance. I think what it was that we, we both latched onto when we were talking is that there was something happening yet again to uh, both dance music and popular music. There was a certain kind of formula creeping back into everything. And it's at those points you really want to try and break things open again. And we had this idea that there were certain elements of dance and R&B that we really liked. Um, we had some ideas of throwing experimental stuff into, <laughs> into that format. I know when David and I talk, Half of the time we get in these elaborate discussions about just different musical cultures and different sources of the music, different origins of the music, before we even do anything. And because of his broad musical background and the type and the taste that he has, I know that it's going to be very, very exciting for me as a musician, but at the same time that there is a point of view. I mean, we, there is, we are going someplace. Yeah, we could get a be better, sec a better second half. If left to my own um, devices, <laughs> I, I will really go off at a tangent. And Niall can bring things back in a very sort of, uh, in, a, in a form that people will sort of um, assimilate easily. But also, you got to remember to not compromise the artistic integrity. I really get kind of indulgent, and, and Niall is very good at making it more accessible. There's definitely never a dull moment. I know that he's always going to surprise me. When David comes in with a song, no matter how simple the motif, I know that in his head somewhere, there's a myriad of unbelievable ideas. I think black tie, white noise, it refers to the racial boundaries that have been put up in, in most of the Western world. White noise itself is something that, you, that I first encountered on the synthesizer many years ago. There's black noise and white noise. And I, I thought so much of what is said and done by the whites is white noise, so I thought I'd latch onto that. Black ties is because for me, musically, uh, the one thing that really turned me on to wanting to be a musician, or wanting to write, was uh, black music jazz and rock artists of the 50s. It also has a lot to do with uh, the black and white side of one's thinking, the inside voice and the outside voice, the voice that the world hears and the voice that you speak to yourself with. It's all those issues. The music on the album includes Bowie's own work on the saxophone, as well as the work of a number of talented musicians who contributed a diverse selection of musical styles. Let's do the thing. From Trinidad came guitarist Wild T. It's sort of like a, a lilting uh, uh, take on the Hendrix style guitar. And he was an absolute delight. I mean, I've never worked with him before. He came straight from a show, I think. I think he flew straight in from a show in Vancouver. And he's very, very tired of it, him, but he worked really hard. Everything changes once the music starts. Jazz great Lester Bowie added some of his subtle trumpet work. <laughs> it was his surname that made me go out and buy CDs. And what a pleasant surprise. I mean, he's got to be one of the major inheritors of the Miles Davis approach to playing. You have to follow him around the studio with a microphone because he won't stand still. 
He's absolutely wonderful. I couldn't resist it. I couldn't resist it. Lester, the Bowie brothers. It had to be. The album also reunited David with his Spiders from Mars guitarist, Mick Ronson. Coming in. It's coming in. Where you come, where they're bringing you in is the solo. And then just keep... I don't keep know where that is. Right where you're coming in. <laughs> It's the first real time that we've worked together in almost 20 years. We sort of kept track of each other through the years, though. Every time I go on tour, Mick turns up somewhere along the line and comes and guests on the show. And I asked him if he would come for old time's sake and, and work on it. A song that we both like very much, which was The Cream's Eye for a Free. And uh, he said he'd be delighted to do that. And, uh, he came along and played his usual breathtaking solo. I mean, what you require from the solo player, unless you're a complete control freak, is you, you want somebody to interpret what they're hearing in their own way. And that gives, the, that gives the song a character of its own. And that's where it really becomes a collaboration. Um, and that's what each of these individuals did. Vocally participating with David on the album was singer Al B. Shore, who joined in on the record's title track. He is one of the most generous, giving artists. I mean, I had a particular thing that I wanted to do with this song, and he spent such a long time, and he's really dedicated at, at, at doing what he does. He understands very much what I was trying to do. I don't think I've, I've ever seen anybody work harder. He's, he's really great. These collaborations, nurtured by Bowie and Rogers, form the backbone of Black Tie White Noise. The synthesis of these various musical textures can be heard in the album's first single, Jump They Say. When comes the shaking man, the nation in his eyes. One of the major differences in, what, in the way that we're working this time, possibly because we're older, is that uh, I think uh, uh, the sessions and the things that we do talk about are a lot more informed by our personal lives this time around mm. than they were the last time around. In, in the early 80s, I think we were more sort of hip to... Uh, that sounds were very much almost uh, the entire substance of our life and the music itself. I think in the 10 years subsequently, one's sort of grown and matured a bit more and, and one's personal life starts to mean a lot more to oneself. And I think those things come up and, and that starts being reflected in the music. It certainly uh, has an impact on the music. <laughs> 